going to show you how to model um, a small little building, make some hinges, um, apply textures like this wood and this rust, making a corrugated displacement map across the roof, um, how to do some basic animation and lighting. So if I hit the space bar, you'll see um, this camera is moving, the door is keyframed, there's a glowing light, um, this ball pops out. Um, in this render engine, you can't see it glowing, so hit Z and then go to rendered mode. Um, give it a moment. And I'll just pause it. You'll see that the sphere's got some glowing light emitting. Um, a few other things about that I'm going to show you is on this door, there's a moon cutout, so that's applied with a transparency. Um, you won't see that in the EV render engine, you have to use cycles. Um, I'm going to show you how to put some lights in. So if I come back to um, look dev, I've got a point light there. It's going for like a bit like a full moon type glow. And then I wanted to fill in to not get harsh shadows, so I put a large area light up here. Um, that's essentially what I want to try to show you in this tutorial. So we're going to push tab on the keyboard and we're going to go into edit mode. I'll turn on my screencast keys. So you'll see down bottom left corner I prefer. Down here if I click with the left mouse you'll see it says left mouse. A to highlight all, that sort of thing. So in edit mode I'm going to scale this. I'm going to push S for scale. I'm going to constrain it to be Rather than get bigger in every dimension, I'm going to push the letter Z, or Z if you're American. And I'm going to, rather than eyeball it, I'm going to type in, and I don't think the typing actually shows up on the screencast keys here, 2.2, .2, and then I'm going to push Enter, and that's going to lock it in. That's going to be the main body of my toilet. And you'll see up here in my scene collection, it's called um, it's called Cube. So I'm going to call that... Um, toilet block and what I'm going to do now is um, put a bit of a tilt on the front roof so I'm going to deselect all either by doing option A or double tap A it's up to you and I'm going to highlight these two uh, vertices on the front I like circle select so I'm going to push C on the mouse and if I want to make the circle bigger I can scroll on my mouse wheel I'm going to collect those two vertices. To get out of circle select, right click. I'm going to pull that up. Now, I don't want to pull it all over the place because it's going to go crazy. So I push right click to drop that. I'm going to go G, Z to constrain it to go up and down only. You'll see the blue line indicates that. And if you want to eyeball it, you can. I'm going to go G, Z um, and make it go up by perhaps um, 0.2. That's not enough, so G, Z, 0.4. There you go, so if you want to do the same as mine, you can go G, Z, 0.4. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that entire face. You can either do it by circle select and grab that whole face, or an alternative would be put face mode, or number three on your um, on your number pad, oh, sorry, not number pad, across numbers across the top. So one is vertice, two, edge three face. So that's how I tend to do it. I'm going to click that one face there. Now I want to rip that off and make it bigger. So I'm going to separate it. I'm going to push the letter P on my keyboard. P and it says separate. I'm going to choose by selection. So now if you look up here in the scene collection I've got the toilet block and a new one called toilet block.001 or for you it'll just be cube.001 if you haven't renamed it. So I'm going to click over here and deselect all going to let me, might have to go to object mode. So now with that top one selected, that toilet block, that's going to be toilet block roof. And I'm going to scale that and make it bigger. Tab to go into edit mode, S for scale. And I'm going to eyeball this one, maybe scale, type it, 1.2, that looks okay. So that eventually is going to be a corrugated iron roof. Now I can hide that and you'll see I've actually got a hole through it. I'm going to control R 
and I'm going to select this way and scroll up one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to eyeball it. I think that'll probably do, and then right click to drop, and that's going to pop in the middle. One more loop cut, and I'm going to come around this way, but I'm going to push a shortcut key, Control R, and as I come um, down, you'll see it's lined up with the bottom. As I come up, it's lined up with the top. So you may wish to, I push E on my keyboard, that's locked into the bottom, and if I push F, it's going to lock in at the top and keep that top angle. I can toggle between those two. So I'm just going to make a horizontal cut around about there. Changing to face select, I'm going to use the letter C on the keyboard. Highlight the area where the door will be. Right click to drop circle select. I'm going to separate this part. The letter P to separate. Choose separate by selection. That is now a separate part. In the scene collection, it's called toilet block.001. I'll rename that to door. Right click, menu delete the numbers, and change it to door. I'm going to change to object mode, deselect by clicking off in the empty space, and highlight my door. I'm going to scale this 98%. S to scale, type 0.98, push enter. And that gives me just a little gap around the outside. The door is too tall. I'm going to scale this 90% vertically only. S to scale. Z for the vertical axis, and you'll see this blue line up and down. And I'm going to type it 0 0.9. So that's 90% the height it was before. I'm going to move it up slightly. G to grab. Z for the z-axis, you'll see the blue line. And then I'm going to pull it up slightly, and then left click to drop. Next thing I'm going to do, tab to edit mode. I'm going to loop cut in the door, control R, and make one click. I'm going to change, um, right click to drop it, and I'm going to change to vertice select. And I'm going to deselect all, and put the um, 3D cursor right in that spot. So I'm going to search Fn, or function F3, that brings up my search. And now I'm going to change this to being um, cursor, C U R. And I'm going to choose Snap Cursor to Active. Snap Cursor to Active. And so that red and white line or circle around the outside is the 3D cursor. I'm going to move this orange dot, that's the origin, to here. The reason I need to do that is if I rotate that door in the z-axis, it's going through the middle of it. And I want it to be somewhere else. I'm going to push Escape to drop that. So I want this origin point to be where the 3D cursor is. Again, searching from object mode, so tab to object mode, function F3 to search, or just F3 depending on your computer, and I'm going to type origin, and I'm going to choose set origin, and I'm going to go set origin to 3D cursor, so that orange dot is now in the 3D cursor, so if I choose rotate on the z-axis, the door is now rotating where I want it to, not through the middle, I'm going to push escape to drop that. The next thing that we want to do is build hinges. So ensure that you're in object mm -hmm. mode. Shift A, add mesh. Now this list. I'm going to come down to cylinder. So add mesh cylinder. Shift A to add. And by default, that's way too big. Don't edit it yet. If you do this option down here, it's going to disappear. Add cylinder. I'm going to change vertices from 32 to 8. And the radius, um, I'm going to probably eyeball that and just drag this down until it looks aesthetically pleasing. That'll do. That happens to be 0 0.02 meters. And the depth, again, I'm going to eyeball that and drag that down until I'm happy with it. So I think that'll do for a nice large hinge. That one is 0 0.36 meters if you're trying to copy along. Push enter. GX, pull that forwards, and GY, bring that off to the side. This is going to get chopped up into three sections to become um, my hinge. So tap into edit mode, control R, to loop cut, scroll up on the mouse wheel and click. One tool that can be used is V to rip. So I just pushed V, you'll see, and if I move, you'll see those are all connected. So I'm going to right click to drop those. And I'm going to use a selection tool called um, 
think it's called Island or Connected um, Selector Links. You'll see there, push the letter L. If I hover over that, it's just any vertice connected to that. So I'm going to move that up G, Z for the Z axis, and I'm going to move it up slightly. I'm going to type 0 0.01, and it's going up slightly. Didn't realize it, but I had that part highlighted, so I'm going to undo, deselect de, uh, de everything. So that's why some people like option A, because they know it's deselected. L, G, Z, 0, 0.01, and up it goes. And deselect all. Hop it over the bottom section, L. I'm going to move this down, so I have to do this negative. G, Z, minus 0 0.01. So they're all spaced out nice and evenly, and they haven't moved in any other crazy directions. I can still um, look down. I could if I had it. Got rid of that face, so I push 3, get rid of that face, X, delete that face, choose face, not anything else, otherwise half your hinge is going to disappear, X, delete face, okay. So this is all the same mesh called cylinder, so that's going to be called hinge, double click, H-I-N-G-E, so there's my hinge. Now I'm going to do a few things in here that um, make sense if you understand the end point. Okay, so I'm going to click modifiers, add modifier, subdivision surface. That's going to make it slightly rounder, but not add any extra vertices. I'm going to loop cut a few things in here, control R, and then slide that up near the top. It's going to help me later. Down there, and the same again. This is just helping with the subdivision surface. Um, rather than loop cutting after I extrude, because the loop flow doesn't really work once I'm about to do the next part. So I'm going to use um, edge select, so push 2 to make sure it's on edge select, and hold down on a Mac, it's option and click. And that's going to get the whole edge, including those little bits there. Now, looking from the front, I'm going to go E for extrude, and I want to constrain that to the Y axis. And I'm going to bring that out as far as I think I need to, so about there. And I'm going to scale it in the Z, S, Z. And that's going to taper down until you think it looks pleasing. Now I could put loop cuts, but you'll see that loop cut doesn't want to go out into here. So that's why I put um, the initial loop cut um, around the cylinder. Next thing that I'm going to do, hold down Option and click, and Shift and Option and click, or Alt if you're on a PC, E to extrude in the Y axis, so push in Y, and I'm going to pull out about that far. And now I'm going to push the number one on my keyboard. It will go to vertice select. Click that one, shift click this one, and then push F to fill. And then option click and get the whole section if it's going to let me. There we go. Option click, get that whole end. And then E to extrude in the Y axis. And I've got something odd going on here. Not entirely sure. what I've done, but if I loop cut and bring down why that one's working fine and this is not, I'm just going to investigate, it's fine, not sure, probably not worth it for this tutorial, and then another loop cut up here on the end, bring that out, click, drag across to the edge, and one on the edge here. Now, for good texturing later on, I'm going to mark scenes. So what we're going to do is edge select, hold down Option and Shift, and go around and click all the edges. I shouldn't need to mark the edges, mostly just around the cylinder, but I'm just going to do it anyway. Control E, mark scene. And it's going to leave a red line on it. And I'm going to also do this one down here. This is probably the main, most important one to do. Control E, mark scene. And these ones here. Hold down option, it should get the whole thing, but it's not. Control E, mark scene. Shift, get all of the edges. Control E, mark scene. E, mark scene, control 
on the outside, again, probably not necessary. The main one that you have to get is this one, telling it how to unwrap. Otherwise, if it automatically does it, it will give you a poor result. So those seams are all marked. I'm going to rotate this around because it's the wrong way around for the, um, the toilet. Highlight all, R to rotate, wipe the Y axis, type 180, push enter. I look from the front and align this where I want it. So G, I'm looking from the front. Really important to do that, otherwise it's going to go crazy. I'm going to use a modifier for this. I'm going to add a modifier and I'm going to choose Array, generate array. And by default, this first one is offset by one, and that, um, if you look at it, is distance forwards and backwards. And I've got this in the wrong place, but I'm going to type that one to be zero for now. And I'm looking from the side, and G, bring that one back until it's touching the wall. It'll do. It's not hidden through the wall. And the Axis I want to use is Z, so if I drag this down, you'll see there is my duplicate. It's arrayed by um, offset or count one, and the Z down by as much as I like until it looks aesthetically pleasing. Um, what I'm going to do now is um, go to object mode. I'm going to separate these parts out slightly because this one's going to move separate to the rest. I'm going to deselect with the separate by selection, tab to object mode, deselect, integer at 001, and then adjust that one until it sits in exactly the right spot. So they're in a nice right spot and with those highlighted and in object mode, hold down shift and click the door. It's important to have the hinge first, then the door, and then I'm going to parent them. Control P. Set parent to object. So when I move the door, um, you won't see hinge.001 anymore unless you dig in. So hinge.001 is actually now part of the door. So if I move that, it's going to move with it. In my next video, I'm going to show you how to apply all the textures, the wood, the rust on the roof, displacement map to make the roof um, have corrugated, corrugations. I've got a transparency section here in the door and this glowing ball. In the third tutorial, I'll show you how to animate it and render it. So subscribe um, for future videos.